The reopening stands in contrast to a lot of the protests that we saw over the weekend. How does the protest wind up affecting this phase one reopening? Well, one can't be certain. I think the, the biggest issue is the revenue loss that the city will suffer as a result of uh, reduced sales taxes, property taxes, and income taxes. And it's impossible to measure, but it is way beyond the capacity uh, fiscally of the city or the state to make up for that lost revenue. Part of that is a function of how many people are going to move out of New York City. There are estimates that hundreds of thousands of people are going to leave New York because of the the, um, the ease with which a virus spreads um, and the congestion and the disabilities of that congestion. Um, I, I, I don't believe that will last a long time because when theaters open up and sports stadiums open up and the things that make city living and New York in particular the most exciting city in the world, uh, I think that um, people will begin to uh, uh, rethink any decision to leave. I think those people who are rich enough to have houses outside of the city are using them now and that creates um, a lot of temporary vacancies. Hopefully, there won't be that many permanent vacancies um, because that's going to have, a, uh, as I said, a devastating impact on municipal revenues. Dick, it's Guy in London. Uh, I, similar kind of experiences being had over here in the British capital. Um, let's talk a little bit about how long it's going to take to get to the next phase, though, for New York. This is phase one. When do you expect phase two? Like, phase two feels like it could be somewhere away. Mr de Blasio is talking about maybe kind of beginning of July. I, what, are you, what are the benchmarks that you're looking for to kind of see how quickly New York is going to progress from phase one to phase two? Well, to be honest with you, I don't think anybody knows. And <laughs> one is guessing about human nature. One is guessing about how the media is going to be portraying what's happening. I think um, the protests are not a disincentive. I think the occasional violence that accompanies some of these protests are ma is a major, major disincentive. There isn't a neighborhood in New York that has suffered broken windows and thefts. And, and that is much more significant than anything other than the virus itself. Uh, and of course, the biggest question is employment. How many people are going to come away from this experience deciding, hey, we don't need a fancy office in downtown Manhattan. We can work from home. We have our computer. We have our ability to get uh, on the internet, to have Zoom broadcasts with our colleagues. Um, and why should we pay $100 a foot in rent to have a fancy office if we can do it just as easily from home? and not have to get in a crowded subway or a crowded bus. And that's a, <clears throat> that's a very hard so thing to predict. My own view is that ultimately the attraction of being with human beings, of being able to go to a movie, the theater, a ball game, uh, uh, go to restaurants, um, <clears throat> just before this... Uh, devastation occurred, I was in a restaurant that was unusually crowded. And I asked the owner, was this something new? And he said, yes. He said, more and more people are choosing um, uh, restaurants to be their social centers. Um, and the restaurant business is, is thriving. Well, if you look at the, um, the amount yeah. of rent that restaurants pay to property owners around the city, um, you got to start worrying about when we're going to return. But I think the nature 
human nature itself is such that people like collegiality, friendship, relationships with people. Um, right. So, so Dick, I, Dick, I'm not smart enough to Dick, tell to you jump in here. To jump in here on that point, so, um, okay, we reopen phase one, we get towards phase two, et cetera. As a New Yorker, what happens if there is an outbreak? Sort of how are you guys tracking the success of the reopening? And do you have plans for sort of a targeted lockdown, a more strategic lockdown, if there are clusters that emerge? Well, I'll tell you, when the protest started, when the tragedy in Minneapolis occurred, uh, the work of our task force was put on hold. The pressures on the mayor and his key staff are enormous. And um, so we're on hold. So I, I, I can't, uh, I don't know. The task force doesn't have a prediction, nor very frankly, do I think any one of us individually, love, any all of us collectively can have any kind of uh, accurate projection at this point on how fast it would take. Dick, just a question on transport and, and an idea of kind of how we progress. Clearly, ridership on the New York subway is going to be significantly decreased. A, do you think that probably need, means that the, um, the, the subway needs extra funding? Do you think that's going to have to be part of the narrative? Uh, and B, do you think New York is doing enough to encourage people to ride bikes uh, and take buses and other forms of transport? Well, let me say this. The um, MTA... Over three and a half million people use the subways every day in, when New York City was prospering in its prime. Uh, that meant that a very small percentage of them actually sat down. They were in crowded cars and buses as well. Uh, and um, I think it's going to take some period of time before... People, uh, you can't make a social distance in a crowded subway car. Uh, so the revenue loss that the MTA is suffering is absolutely staggering. They already got several billion dollars from the CARES Act, and they're, we're hoping very much that uh, the Congress will uh, appropriate another several billion dollars to keep the MTA going. Uh, to make sure it has the ability to maintain its its uh, power stations, its fleet, its repair facilities, and has the capacity to move people. Um, they, they are uh, changing schedules to try to get um, spread out the, the use of the subway so that it minimizes congestion. But again, to predict how human nature is going to respond to all of this uh, uh, is, is beyond the capacity of any honorable person.